there are those who say that you cannot determine anything about a proposition if you do not know the truth values. But to them I say, you don't know the power of the dark side. And also, I tell them how to draw truth tables where you can make those determinations. Hi everyone, it's Professor Dan here with the next installment of Professor Dan Does Propositional Logic in a way that's totally like it would have been if we were actually having physical classes and not at all contrived and nor does it feed into his desire to make strange videos with clunky special effects or any such thing as that. Today what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to draw a truth tape. And a truth table is something that allows us to say something about a proposition even if we don't know the specific truth values of any of its component parts. So to do that, we take a proposition. I'm going to take a proposition that has two letters, A and B. Those are going to be my two letters. And I am going to use A and B twice. In fact, let me flip this around right here for illustration purposes. And, uh, oh no, I forgot that I had a color for the parentheses. Right? Blue was the color of parentheses for those people who are visual learners and green was the color of our operators. So A and B or not B and A. So here I have a proposition, but I don't know anything at all about the truth values of A or B. I only know that A and B, whatever they are, can be either true or false. So I need to think of all the possible combinations, and once I do that, I can solve all these operators, and I can say something about this whole proposition right here. But to do that, I have to know how to put this together, this thing which is called a truth table. So just like when we were doing the truth value of operators, A could be true or false, B can be true or false, and I need the possible combinations. Since there are two values and two letters, it's two to the power of two, which means I'm going to have four rows going across. Half of the truth values in the first will be true, and the second half will be false. And that's going to be the case under each and every letter A. So I'm going to fill those in first. The next letter is going to be half of the first letter. So if the first letter was two trues and two falses, the next will be one and one. And again, that repeats every time I see that letter. And I keep doing that until I get to alternating. So if I have three letters originally, I will have two to the power of three, which is eight. And then my first column of letters will be four T's and four F's, and then two, 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 and then one, 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 one. If I have four letters, then I'd have 16 rows going across. So I'd have eight, eight, four, 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 two, 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 one, 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 I think. Anyway, once I have the initial truth values down, I can solve just like I solved when I knew specifically which things were true and which were false. And I just go across line by line working the same way that I worked previously starting with the inside of the parentheses and working out. So inside my parentheses I have true, false, false, false. Over here, I have the same thing, true, false, false, false. 
But, on my second proposition in this disjunction, I have a negation. And this negation is going to negate this column right here because it's negating the entire parenthesis, which is governed by this conjunction. So this green operator is going to deal with this green column. So let me uh, put that in red, again, for illustrative purposes. I apologize if this confuses those of you who are visual learners because red was the color of brackets. But now it's also going to be the color of this column right here. So false, true, true, true. That leaves me then with this right here, which of course is the main operator. And the main operator is the final column of my truth table. And in this case, that final column is going to compare this conjunction with this operator. And so I remember from my previous uh, excursions that a disjunction is only false when both sides are false. So these are all true. And then I can, if I want to, I can circle this or if I'm typing something up on a word processor, I can highlight this final column. And I see that my final column shows that in every permutation, this proposition ends up being true. And therefore, this proposition is what we call tautologous. That is, it's logically true. No matter what the truth values are of these letters, this whole proposition ends up being true. Now, I knew it would end up being true because it's actually an expression of the law of contradiction. Let's see what happens, though, if I change my main operator here if I change that to a dot if I say A and B and not B and A you'll notice then that the final column ends up being all false which means on my second proposition, it is self-contradictory. A single proposition can be one of three things. Self-contradictory, it can be tautologous, as I said before, and it can also be contingent. And it's contingent if the final column is a mixture of trues and falses. Let's see what that might look like. Let's try one with three letters. Terrible B. Now I have three letters, C, B, and A, and I am going to use a conditional, and because I have three letters and multiple operators, I need parentheses, and I'm going to go ahead and do another conditional in here. Now I have three letters, so the first letter is going to get half trues and half falsies. But wait a minute, which letter is the first letter? Because the A is over here, and A is the first letter of the alphabet. But we're not learning the alphabet today, we're learning truth tables. So I start with whatever letter is furthest to the left. That is what gets the first run of truth values. It doesn't matter where it falls in the alphabet, it matters where it falls in the proposition. So 
half true and half false. Then my next letter is half of that again. And my third letter is half again until I get to singles. Once again, I'm going to solve inside out. I remember that a conditional is only false when the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. And so if I'm trying to do things in a, in a rush, which is not usually what we recommend you try to do when you are doing logic or any other thing, rushing leads to injury and error, as we like to say. But wherever I have a false antecedent, I know I have a true conditional. And now I'm going to compare this column with this column to get my final column, which I will put in red this time. True then true is true. True then false is false. That's the only instance where I have a true antecedent and a false consequent. These are all false, so I know, therefore, the conditional will be true. So here, I have eight rows, but only one of those eight rows is false. But if even only one is false and all the rest is true, if there's any mixture of truth and falsehood, then the proposition is contingent. So now, I can say something about if C, then B, then A. Whatever C, B, and A happen to be, I can say that a proposition arranged this way is true unless C and B are true while A is false. And that's how I analyze a single proposition. What if, however, I wanted to analyze two propositions? Well, if I want to analyze two propositions, I can do that as well. What I need to do is I need to figure out, just like I did with my original truth tables, how many rows and columns I'm going to need, how many letters do I have. However many letters I have is the total between the two propositions. So let's say I have Z or B, oops, I made my, my operator the wrong color there. I'm going to use Z, B, and Q. And I'm going to say Z or B, then Q. I'm putting my parentheses around B, to B and Q. And then for my second proposition, I'm going to say Q and I'm going to go Z and B and I'm going to say Q if and only if uh, Z oops, wrong color, parentheses color put my parentheses on, and B. So now I have two propositions. So when I'm doing two propositions, I can compare them to each other. And I can compare them to each other according to four comparisons of their final columns. But in order to do any of those comparisons, I need their final columns. So now I proceed exactly the same way as I did with one truth table. I do my initial truth values. And I do my left proposition first. And then whatever I did on the left hand side, I do on the right hand side. I match it exactly. So since Q was the alternating, I 
I do that. Now, Z, or Z, as they say in Canada, A, is the one that was half and half. And then B It's important, he says, without any trace of irony, to try to be as neat as possible with these truth tables so you don't get lost amongst the rows and columns. I recommend, if you're doing these on word processors, that you use the table function, which we will talk about uh, at another time. So now I have my initial truth values. I'm going to solve inside brackets. I know a conjunction is false if any side of the conjunction is false. I have a conditional over here, so I have true and false here, so that's going to be false and it's going to be false there, and the rest of it is going to be true. So now I will use red for my final column on each one of these again. I remember a disjunction is only false if both sides are false, so it's only false right there. And the rest of the time, it's going to be true. Because this is all true right here, and I got trues right here. And again, I'm comparing this column here to this column here, because I saw what's inside the parentheses. Same thing over here. I'm comparing the Q to what is under this conjunction. And a biconditional is true when both sides are the same. I have a false and a false here, so that's true. So now I have these two final columns. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at each one and I am going to see what is in each final column. And I'm going to compare them according to four comparisons, four different ways I can analyze these two together. If the final column is the same on each and every line, then these propositions are logically equivalent. That is, they are the same. If they are the exact opposite on each and every line, then they are called contradictory propositions. If they're not the same on every line, but they share a few lines where they're, well, at least one line, excuse me, where they're both true, they are what's called consistent. And if they share only a falsehood on one line, and they share nothing else other than falsehood, but there's other differences, then they are called inconsistent. So the first row is true here, and it's true here. So so far they might be equivalent and they're not going to be self they're not going to be contradictory. And because they share some truths, they're also not going to be inconsistent. But when I see my second line, I see a true here and I see a false here. So they're not the same on every line and, not, and they are not different on every line, but they share at least one true, and therefore these two propositions are consistent. Now they also, I want to say, oh, no, they don't share a false on any particular line. So, but if they did share a true here, say, and a false down here, truth beats falsehood, so they would still then be inconsistent. And that's how you compare two propositions to each other. Now when you're doing this, right, you want to make sure that when you do this, you have some space between the two propositions. Um, oh, I probably should not have used my lightsaber on the board there. But you want some space so you don't get the two propositions confused with each other. So that's how you construct truth tables, and that's how you analyze them, and that's how you compare them. So on our next video, which will be our last video of the semester, we'll look at how we can take these wonderful truth tables and make arguments out of them. Won't that be fun? Yes, it will.